This man that you see pictured here with a drug dealer on a luxury yacht is Núñez Fejo, President of the Spanish province of Galicia. He wants to promote his beautiful land through cycling via a new competition, O Gran Camino, a four-day UCI race that is underway at the moment. For this, Fijo has reached an agreement with the company of a former rider, Ezequiel Mosquera, who, for the UCI, is a cheater who tried to win the 2010 Vuelta a España when masking the EPO that was in his system, and who continues to live cycling, although now from a different perspective. His story is linked to that of the Chacobeo Galicia team, one of the most controversial teams that Spain has generated in sport. Interestingly, it's also linked to that of Alberto Contador and his famous contaminated sirloin steak. Want to hear the story? Well, without any further ado, let the show begin! The footballer shown on screen is the Russian Valery Karpin, a legend of Celta de Vigo, who, after retiring and becoming a real estate developer, decided to create in 2006, together with the Galician government, a cycling team. This was done in an attempt to mix the sentimentality of local homeland warmth with top-level sport. In the purest of Scatello Scali style, the team was born from cleansiness and transparency, hiring cyclists involved in Operation Puerto, such as Marcus Serrano, Isidro Nazal, or Eladio Jimenez. It chose as director the legendary Alvaro Pino, who directed the Fonac team of the doped up Tyler Hamilton or Santi Perez. Two godfathers of the sport who were at the team presentation were Tour de France winners Miguel Indurain and Oscar Pereiro, both who were more than happy for the appearance of this new continental team, which already made it clear that in its first season it could succeed in the world of cycling. Thus, in 2007, the team won the Joaquín Agostinho Trophy and the stage of the Tour of Portugal with Eladio Jiménez. Both competitions well known for being super clean, but what promised to be a magical adventure for this doped up rider from Salamanca in the Vuelta a España turned into broken dreams when its director Javier Guillén told Carpen that either he would have to kick out of the team all those that were involved in Operation Puerto or else he would not be able to participate at all in the Spanish Grand Tour. This was done and therefore the nine that lined out for the competition were essentially a totally different team. Amongst them, an unknown 31-year-old, Ezequiel Mosquera, a climber without any victories to his name, and with experience only in random teams in Portugal and in the Comunidad Valencia, post-Operation Puerto. But this long-haired and slim climber would turn out to be the surprise package of the whole Vuelta a España. Despite having no previous experience in Grand Tours, Mosquera quickly proved to be the best rider of Carping Galicia, with spectacular performances in the mountains. Already on the mountain top finale in Lagos de Covadonga, he finished in the top 10. But it was in the ninth stage, finishing in the ski resort of Serlet, where he began to impress the world. There, he finished third, behind only the radioactive Italian Leonardo Piepoli and the Russian fraudster Denny Menchov. He even finished ahead of Carlos Sastre, who would win the Tour de France a season later. He continued to be amongst the best in the mountain stages, and thanks to his consistency, he finished a surprising fifth overall in the end, six and a half minutes down on the winner, Denny Menchov. So there he was, a previously unknown rider, at quite an advanced age, but now in the top five overall of the Vuelta. And it would not be the only time. For in 2008, Mosquera and Carpen Galicia increased their standards yet again. Zeki finished second in the first stage of the Vuelta al País Vasco, only beaten by the best version of Alberto Contador ever, and even ended up winning the Clásica de Alcobendas. Carpin even attended the presentation of the Tour de France, believing, it seemed, that because of his epic results with unknown cyclists, he would be invited. Something that evidently did not happen. At the same time came the real estate crisis, so the former footballer decided to take the money and run. It was the Galician government who once again saved Ezequiel Mosquera from unemployment, putting up the money so that the team would now be called Chacobeo Galicia. Thus, they were again invited to the Vuelta, and they raised their level again compared to the previous year. Their rider David Garcia won one of the stages in Ponferrada, and Mosquera himself, in a high-level Vuelta, terrorised all comers in the mountains. In the first high mountaintop finish in Andorra, only the doped Italian Alessandro Balan, who would later go on to be world champion that year, 
reached the finish line before him. And in the Fuentes de Invierno stage, Mosquera blew away Alejandro Valverde and tour winner Carlos Sastre on the hardest slopes. Although Contador was more contra troll than ever and took the victory from the Galician rider in the last metres. Mosquera was clearly now the team leader and he finished fourth in the overall classification. For 2009, the team had been invited to both the Giro d'Italia and the Vuelta a España, but misfortune came for Arizeki. Mosquera had suffered a domestic accident and he couldn't go to Italy, the very same country that Alejandro Valverde couldn't set foot in because of his involvement in Operation Puerto, even though he had resorted to the home remedies of his mentor, Jose Luis Dorado from Brucho, a specialist in medicinal herbs from deepest Galicia. But anyway, Mosquera recovered for the part of the campaign that was best for him, and in August he won the mountain stage in the Lagunas de Miela in the Vuelta a Burgos, an ad hoc preparation for the Vuelta, where he was again on the verge of winning a mountain stage, this time in the Sierra Nevada, where he was the best of the climbers, but he couldn't catch up with the escapee David Moncoutier. In the Andalusian triplet of mountain finishes, he finished in the top 5 in all of the stages, but his deficit in the time trials caused him to finish 5th in the only Vuelta a España that was ever won by Valverde. And so, 2010 had to be his year, and despite some damn allergies that prevented him from performing at the beginning of the campaign, by September he was back in top form, and had once again become the leader of the Galicians for the Vuelta a España. This time though, the team was suffering from money problems, and Alvaro Pino assumed that if there were no private sponsors, the Fejo government was going to stop providing money for cycling. Therefore, Mosquera and the team doctor, Jose Manuel Rodriguez Bastida, carried out a stealth preparation in Peña Travinca with a clear objective, to try to win the Vuelta a España with a 34 year old climber. And the truth is that they were very close to achieving it. It was a Vuelta without any big stars, with a rather poor participation, and in which Mosquera also had the support of the Spanish fans aware that he was the best chance of a home victory. However, in the first stages, an epic Igor Anton was the one who surprised all and sundry. Anton took several victories, leaving Mosquer to fight for the minor places, such as when he came in second behind Anton in Andorra. But the Basque rider fell, and Mosquera again began to climb up the rankings, with great performances in the Astorian and Cantabrian stages. He was, along with a young Vincenzo Nibali, the best climber of that Vuelta. Mosquera was less than 50 seconds behind the Italian in the decisive stage, the climb to the Bola del Mundo ski station in Madrid, with an altitude of more than 2,000 metres. There the Chacobea Galicia rider gave his best and he won the stage in a sprint ahead of Nibali, who took the final victory in the Vuelta, while Mosquera finished second. His dream had come true, he had finished on the podium of a Vuelta at the tender age of 34. But days later, radio announcer Jose Ramon de la Morena announced that Mosquera had tested positive for hydroxyl, an EPO masker that showed up in controls carried out in that Vuelta. His teammate David Garcia, 11th in the final classification, also tested positive for EPO. That was in a stage in which he had finished second. At practically the same time, the news of Alberto Contador's positive for clenbuterol came out. And Mosquera did not understand how the Spanish government was defending the then Astana cyclist and not him, in a clear allusion to different rules for the rich and for the poor. Mosquera signed for the Dutch team Vacon Soleil, the same team that had acquired the Cobra, Ricardo Rico. But he could not participate in any competition, the UCI had sanctioned him and stripped him of his victory in the Bola del Mundo, and also his second place overall in the Vuelta. Mosquera appealed to the Spanish court and the latter, lax as usual, exonerated him of doping, although in the eyes of the UCI he is still a pure and simple cheater and they have not officially returned his titles. Mosquera felt that there was a clear double standard. His teammate David Garcia, positive for EPO, was able to remain a professional and to compete in Portugal, while he had to settle for creating a company of sporting events and to continue living from cycling without actually getting on a bike. Well, as time gives and takes away favours, in 2022, 12 years after his positive, he is now the promoter of a cycling competition supported by the UCI, which still considers him a cheater, and is also supported by the politicians of the day. 
Maybe now, Mosquero will keep quiet and will no longer talk about Contador, the UCI or the politicians. <laughs>